Runway ML have released image to video for Gen 3, which I think solidly solidifies us into like the 2.0 era of AI video, considering we now have three leading models with image to video capability, namely, of course, Runway, Kling, and Luma's Dream Factory. So today we'll go through a full rundown review of Gen 3's image to video capabilities, what it's really good at, where it's kind of lacking, and actually what's kind of exciting about it as well. And yes, we'll do a full comparison of the three models as well. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off with some community generations before we move into my findings, uh, Elias Artista gives us this video. The walk cycle here looks really good, but you know, what I'm really impressed with is the fact that it's picking up a reflection. Now the reflection is acting a bit weird, but the fact that, you know, Gen 3's model understands that that is a reflective surface and can surmise what it's reflecting is uh, pretty impressive. Jared Liu gives us some eyeballs. That's been kind of a standard test ever since that first crop of Sora videos first came out. Yeah, these, uh, these all look really pretty great. Blaine Brown gives us our first look at Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom, which was the announcement made at Comic-Con over the weekend. Uh, I have mixed feelings about that announcement, but Blaine's video does look pretty awesome. My pal Dave Clark started playing around with his live action Akira remake. Well, AI generated live action Akira remake. Uh, yeah, all of this looks really good. This would go over pretty big at Comic-Con as well. The UI is dead simple. Basically, you just upload an image into this area. It does have to be a 16 by nine image. Uh, from there, you just issue a prompt. You do have an option to either have generations in 10 seconds or in five seconds. Uh, and then, you know, basically you just hit generate. Now, Nicholas Newbert over at Runway did stress that text prompts do play a very strong part in Gen 3 outputs. For example, here, I think that the initial image prompt is, you know, the guy sitting in a dry room and then the text prompt for this becomes water falling from the ceiling. And, you know, indeed we end up with this as an output. The fact that you're able to do this without keyframing the dry room and the wet room uh, definitely implies that Runway has come a long way in their world model. Now, I am always keen on reminding everyone that when you see an example out in the wild, it probably has been cherry picked. So just kind of going with the similar vibe here, although a different elemental aspect, taking this mid journey generated image of a, uh, kind of like teak bohemian style living room that probably every item in there costs way too much. I can almost guarantee you. Uh, and then issuing the prompt room explodes on fire. Uh, we get this and take that William Sonoma. Now I will say that the room doesn't really explode on fire. Like it, the fire just kind of appears like in one frame, the room is fine. And on the next frame, you know, there's fire everywhere. But what I am really impressed with is the understanding of the physicality of the room. There's a cool use case, not quite as destructive as mine from Jamie on this, uh, with this UFO appearing out of the cloud. So obviously the initial input is just the buildings, no UFO, and then the text prompt of a UFO appearing out of the clouds. And yeah, this looks really great. Moving on to some of my more standard tests, our guy in the blue business suit walking down a busy city street, uh, this time answering his phone. Our guy definitely came out as like sort of a love child between John Hamm and Henry Cavill. Overall, not too bad. This is something that I probably would re-roll a few more times if I actually needed this shot. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I think it's fairly workable. We do have some issues back here with the billowing flags. That's something that we saw in Gen 3's text to video as well. So that just seems to be something that is kind of an ongoing problem, probably something to avoid. You do note that there are people that are walking backwards here, but that actually corrects itself. It's pretty interesting. Uh, once it passes the five second mark, the background characters actually start moving forward. I do want to point out that we did end up with this hilarious result where our guy is walking down the street with his business and his personal phone, both ring at the same time. He's like, I got this. Interesting example here of this girl trying out wigs. They are 25% off after all. But some things that I am pretty impressed with, the fingers running through the hair look pretty solid. They, you know, they don't turn into like 20 fingers. Uh, the thumb does look a little elongated, but uh, it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's still passable. For the most part, you know, the character stays very consistent. The mole actually stays where it should. And, you know, the 25% off sign does not morph out into some, you know, weird gibberish text. Nice cinematic shot here in sort of a very David Fincher-esque style of two people talking. Uh, I'm pretty sure that she did it and he's next. 
But we're getting some nice acting on her part um, with a little bit of lip flap and head movement, uh, similarly for our guy as well. Acting is something that I'm going to circle back to in just a minute, but uh, sort of similarly on topic, you know, in terms of hand acting at least, uh, we do see here that Gen 3 still does struggle with hands. Um, well, for one, there's a lot of unnecessary kind of hand gesturing happening in this scene, but yeah, you can definitely see there's still a lot of like morphing and inconsistency issues that are happening within the hands. Um, it's gotten a lot better, but yeah, I mean, it's it's still AI hands. One thing that I've noticed with the model, at least in its current state, is that it really likes to zoom in on things. Uh, so taking the shot of Batman, you'll see like it doesn't really want to orbit him at all. It just it just kind of wants to zoom in on his face. Uh, not a lot of acting on Batman's part, unless you consider brooding acting. Another example is taking a shot of Captain Renfield from my short Dead Sea. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Gen 3 model just really kind of zooms in on him. It's a really intense look and, you know, a good shot, but Captain Renfield's really not doing that much. Now, our bro back here that's vaping up a storm, like, I mean, he's doing stuff, but it's not really the intent. And not to get ahead of ourselves in terms of comparison, but running that same output through Kling uh, definitely does yield more personality. Speaking of Dead Sea, I still could not get my plank walking scene in Gen 3, so now that's all three models basically refuse to allow that to happen. Um, that said, Gen 3 does a have a really cool version of this shot and something that i thought was pretty interesting is that it actually added more detail into the pirate ship that's something that i haven't actually seen any of the models do they usually actually you know decrease your textural quality uh in this case gen 3 actually added to it by the way if you need help with prompting i did build a gpt for prompting in gen 3 um all you have to do is you know basically just drag an image in give it some light directions of what you want to have happen in the scene, and then it'll write out the prompt for you. It is totally free. Results can vary depending on, you know, how stupid ChatGPT is deciding to be on any particular day or hour. Uh, but if you want to try it out, the link is down below. Rounding out with a few last examples before we move into comparisons, I did upload a screenshot of myself and we got this, uh, which is, uh, it's, it's pretty good. Super weird for me to look at, but yeah, I mean, I got to admit, pretty solid. I also wanted to see how it would do with kind of more fast motion action sequences. So I used kind of this Kung Fu fight as a input image. And, um, well, we got this, which yeah, it's, I mean, it's wrong, but it's interesting. There's definitely something here. It definitely feels like text to video takes over at some point. Like our character definitely morphs into a completely different character. There's a lot of action movement here very you know decoherent and crazy but the background stays the same so I, I find that very interesting another quick martial arts sequence yeah it doesn't quite work yet but it is definitely getting there moving on to some comparisons and actually beginning with some news Kling has finally gotten it together and you can now actually purchase credits uh, on the international site so basically anyone in the world can now use Kling. There is currently a flash sale going on for 50% off. You have options to either sign up monthly for as low as $5, or you can sign up annually for the year as high as $552. So there's definitely a good range of prices available here. Beginning with our man in the blue business suit, this once again is our Gen 3 output. Luma yielded this, which I actually thought was pretty interesting in that he's not actually talking on his phone, he just pulls out his phone like he's getting a text message. So, I mean, he is technically answering his phone. And Kling likewise also gives us a result in which he's just pulling out his phone and either looking at a text message or he has it on speakerphone. Don't be speakerphone guy. Another example here of a synth playing a synth. This was one of my first Luma Labs outputs. And so I was curious to see how Gen 3 would handle it. Yeah, I think it looks really pretty good. Uh, use case could definitely be in like a music video or something. The Luma output actually went a little bit on the crazy side. It actually kind of looks like she's standing in front of like an LED screen, but at the same time, I, I still think it works. The Kling output also went a little bit soft on the background as well, but overall, I think all three had a pretty solid interpretation of the image. Remember that wigs are currently 25% off. Once again, this is the Gen 3 output of that image. 
Here is Luma's version, where she's kind of reaching back and showing off that she's probably definitely double jointed. And Kling's version, which is definitely giving us much more of a handheld feel. Finally, rounding out with just straight up acting. This is actually where I feel that Gen 3 is actually at its weakest right now. Uh, the prompt here was just man talking, telling story. Um, with Gen 3, obviously, we just kind of get a zoom in. Luma gives us this. We do have an issue here where his hand comes up and it just kind of decoheres out. And finally, from Kling, we have this which I personally think is the best of the three. And I have very much been citing Kling as the best model for AI acting. Although that said, now that we have tools like Live Portrait, which are getting better and better every day, that whole thing might be a moot point anyhow. But Runway is obviously nowhere near done with Gen 3 yet. I mean, it is still very much in alpha. It hasn't even hit beta yet. And we've still got some pretty big heavy hitter features like motion brush and camera control coming up. And th those are kind of bound to be game changers. At the end of the day, I personally think that each of these AI video generators are all kind of doing remarkable things. All of them have their strengths and all of them have their blind spots. But I honestly think that using a combination of them, uh, plus, you know, kit bashing whatever tools you might want to, there really isn't anything that you can't accomplish at this point. So let me know what you think about Gen 3's image to video down in the comments. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.